is worthless to many. I take you, Dollar Bill. I take you, Dollar Bill. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poor. For poor. And in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love. To love. Cherish and obey. Cherish and obey. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I plight thee my troth. And thereto I plight thee my troth. The ring, please. Inasmuch as you two held before me to be joined in the holy state of matrimony, I now pronounce you man and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. My Minnie held out a long time by me and it caught up with her at last. Yes, when I get married again, I'm going to marry me a real high yellow. He may beat me, but I know my good home cooking will bring him around all right. The Lord shows and brother Dollar Bill a loving wife. A loving wife, Fred. No good. Right, go. Shh. If she's got a penny left from her first husband's insurance this time next year, I'll be a lucky mammy. What makes you think it's going to last that long? See, they are folks. I made them myself. They have a little cake in them, but not too much. She's a lucky woman, that Sister Minnie is. Yes, and she's got such a good man for a husband. Now listen, Sister Minnie has the man she wants, and she's satisfied. And I hope you all the same. How am I ever going to get these plates ready if you keep on eating up the decorations? You are the decoration leader for these eats. In fact, I think I'll just take a bite of this sugar lady finger for a change. Now, let me see how I can devour this bullet here so it'll be equally shared among you. Now, to my good friend from Philadelphia, Brother Longboy Johnson, I give the neck of this here bullet. <laughs> And the right wing I give to Miss Nana Mae Brown that's sitting over there in that chair and is ready for the kill. <laughs> in the right left wing here yeah, I give to her good friend there, Miss Liza Lee Washington. And as I am from the Middle West, me, I get the press. Oh, I got this. I'm in time to the press. I'm doing the call. What do our good preacher, Brother Holmes, say? He is entitled to these rare pieces that come from the back of this here famous bullet. That's right, right. That's what he should have. And now, for a little old sort of run that's always jumping around, minding other people's business, and didn't know that a chicken had nothing but a neck and two feet till it brought him up now, I give the Southern's most potion. <laughs> <laughs> come on, wait a minute. Come on, wait a minute. Come on, sit down there. Come on, now stop it. I'll call you. Oh. Miss Simpson to you, Blanky. All right. Miss Simpson. You know, I don't see any reason why you and I can't get better acquainted. It's just my style. It's just my style. And you got a good job. Yes, and I've got sense enough to keep away from the likes of you. Good boy. Just a minute more. Why should you keep worrying and waiting day in and day out just to come home and spend them lonesome nights? I'm satisfied with my empty nights, and I'm not going to clutter them up with the likes of you. Now, do the lady have to knock you in the head with something to convince you that she ain't coming up on that stuff? Get back in there. Get. Oh, yeah. Now, ain't it just too bad? Old long boy is about to lose his leg and have to go hippity hopping all through life with a tin can hustling pennies. Give me my leg. Put that out to the air. Keep it there. That's only a sample of what I give them when they try to muscle in on my territory. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And as for you, home cooking mom. No, sir. It is true. I'm a lonely woman who could do with a loving man. And I admit, I've been praying to the Lord to send me one. But I've been praying for a whole. Well, height ain't got nothing to do with loving. Says who? Please send me some 
some linen out of the bottom drawer. Well, Sue, what do you think of your new father? Well, that's a bright room. I think he's your plan. I'm glad to hear you say that. But I was a little worried. Worried? About what? About you. When everybody was kissing the bride and groom and you made yourself scarce, made me think you weren't happy. And I do want you to have a good time. Anything that makes my mother as happy she is and she has a good time for me. This thing is going to work out great after all. Your mother happy? You and me happy. Is everybody happy? Gee, you're the prettiest kid I've ever seen. Glad you like me, sir. Now, may I get my linen mother is waiting? Now wait. But how about the kiss I didn't get? Oh, that? Here it is. Tell me you haven't family quarrels already. Well, what's my nerve? She'll get over it. You know, when I moves in on a deal, I moves in. <laughs> well, when are you going to break the news to the dame about the loan? Soon now, huh? Tonight's the night. Beat the iron water's heart. That's me. Honey, your friends are waiting for you before they cut the cake. Brother, the bankroll's called. I gotta go. You don't see me stopping you. Step aside, small chain. Hey, baby, uh, this is the rumble, honey. I don't care what you call me. Cut it out. Listen, baby, I make spares money, and I'm looking for fast mama like you to spend money. Well, I'm not a fast mama, and I wish you'd stop blowing your little breath in my face. Now, look here, we got to get along. Come on, baby. How come everybody's trying to propose to me today? It wouldn't be because I've got on all the stuff. Well, no, honey, I, I, I didn't like to lack you. You know, I just called for you, for you sure is a, a reflectionate woman. And you're a tough-eyed Now, wait a minute, honey, don't, don't be like that. Come on, Mr. Daxia, will you? Hey, 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 you two guys. Quit playing them funeral march tunes. Play me some blues. The lady made a request for it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The lady made a request for the blues. For that tune. I said, play me some blues, or else I'll be a knot on the both of his head. You get that? The man said to play the blues. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's have a time, because this house is going to get rainy. Woo! This ain't a funeral parlor, brother. Damn! Well, that guy's dead. Well, why don't they act like it? I'm sorry about your dead husband's picture. I wouldn't have had this happen for anything in the world. Oh, it's not your fault, Carla. I'm not blaming you. I suppose when you're having a good time, everything goes. You happy? Mm-hmm. Come on, everybody, let's go cut the cake. Come on. Let's cut this cake. I got to get this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the all the blessings that we have received for the nourishment of our souls and body. Amen. Now that we have launched these two lovebirds on the sea of matrimony, the best part of the ceremony is yet to come. Now who will be the next two to cut the cake? That is to signify that they will follow in the footsteps of Sister Minnie and the good brother Dollar Bill. Cut the cake, Sue. You've got to make a wish, too. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Why don't y'all give me a chance here? Boy, I bet you I could take my knife and stick it down in that cake and deal everybody a slice. Lord, I wish you all just shut up and let the young folks cut the cake. I would like to remind you that this is a part of the wedding ceremony just as sacred as the other. Y'all are just in time to see the next two victims start out on them rough seas of matrimony. Now, is I'm gonna get a piece of this. In defense of my own reputation as a carving man, I feel that I can say in the past I have exhibited perfect technique and attained satisfactory results in this distinguished profession. 
I just can't help laughing to myself when I think of all the strange people who go to make it up. Black Manhattan. What a place. You really love Harlem, don't you, Paul? Yes, there's so much to be done here. It's fairly screaming for leadership. And I let you lead a panel, Mr. Bob Ashley. And I let you lead a man's inspiration, Sue. Looking into the future, I just can't see any happiness without you. How dare you even think about it? That's being unfaithful. Oh, I couldn't be unfaithful to you if I wanted to be. If I did make a pass at another girl, just when my line was going good, I'd be certain to call her soon. I'd like to see you go into town with some other girl. Oh, it's no use. They'll never believe me. I'm a marked man. Everything I do and everything I say is so wrapped up in you, I'd be licked before I started. You don't mean to tell me you love me, Mr. Ashley. I don't mean to tell you anything else. I'm going to hold you to it this day. Forever. What's more in you, baby? Oh, it's nothing you can do anything about. How do you know? You never tried. Oh, it's too involved. What's too involved? Come, speak up. Oh, let's forget it. I'm not letting anything spoil our happiness. You can't start keeping secrets from me now. You're worried about your mother's marriage, now, aren't you? Yes. And Bob was so in love with him, I even think she would turn against me if she thought it would make him happy. We are going right in there now, and I'm going to tell her we ought to get married. But Bob... Please be careful how you speak to him. He's a hooker man. Hate you. Oh, yeah? So, so I'm going to hand him my robe off the bed. I'll hand him his robe off the bed. Here's your robe, and I want to see you. I'll be right out, fella. What's eating you, fella? Nothing is eating anybody. Bob wants to tell you about our engagement. Engaged? <laughs> On what? On love. Did you ever hear of it? That's just what I expected coming from a dude like you. You expect the sweetest kid in town to move out of a comfortable home, to live with you on love, or do you expect to move in here on her? You know, Sue gave this whole thing the wrong approach by even suggesting that I give a tingle's damn about your consent. Well, what do you want from me, then? All I want you to do is leave my fiance alone. We don't believe that your interest in Sue is paternal. So while she still has to live under the same roof with you, I'm asking you kindly to stop hemming off all over the house. Listen, you, I thought you knew when to keep a silver tongue on your head. But since you're going to play mudslinger, I can sling some too, see? Did you ever tell Sue how you raised money to keep you in school? I know Bob works every summer. That's what he tells you, but I got friends who know different, see? You got friends who know what? I bought the skirt in Saratoga who's been hanging her dough. The chicken buffalo you promised to marry. And many others I can lay hands on to testify I'm right if it comes to a showdown. You're a rotten liar. Please stop it, both of you! Hiding behind this kid isn't gonna save your skin, sir. I'll make you crawl back into your bottle. Step aside, Sue. Mama should have known. She had to know sooner or later. Get up, Bob. That's why he gets his gun. That snake hasn't got guts enough to shoot anything. For my sake, please, Bob. Turn around, sucker. Start falling, sissy. Oh, please, darling, don't. He was excited. He didn't know what he was saying. I'll promise I'll never even speak to him again if you let him go. You can be a mighty brave guy when you're holding the difference, doll. Yes, and I'm planning to let you have a load of this difference, too. Please, for my sake. Is it only up and up you let that guy go? Please, All right. 
Get out before I change my mind. I had to do something, Bob. He was going to kill you. You did something, all right. You put the okay on his date. But I couldn't let him shoot you, Bob. Sue! Sue, honey! Down, honey. I've been bragging that my girl was too good to be seen in a place like this. And here you come. Oh, Mama, please don't quarrel with me. I just want to be near you tonight. Look at me, Sue. Did you have an argument with your father? Mm -hmm. I might have guessed it. Why don't you try to be nice to the man? I know it's hard getting accustomed to seeing someone else take your place in my affection. But it's a different kind of affection, baby. He thinks you resent him because you're jealous. You never... Mama, please! All right, if you're going to be hysterical about it, wait until we get home. As long as you're here, I'll introduce you to a couple of people. I've got to get the girls ready anyway. Come on. I can never think of your last name. Smith. Oh, yes. Well, this is my daughter, Sue. And don't tell me she looks like my sister. I won't believe it. Where have you been keeping this killer dinner daughter of yours, Minnie? Why, this is the answer to a producer's prayer. With your perpetuity, I could build a whole of you around you. Talent or no talent, you've got what it takes. Yes, and I've got what it takes to keep her out of here. You're very kind, Mr. Broadway. Thanks. Come, baby. This is no place for you. I'm calling Bob to take you home this minute. We ain't standing for no excuses in this district. We collect a lot of money for protection, and there's enough for everybody, if we carry out orders. But some of us get too smart for our own necks. That's why I'm here to talk to you fellas. Well, I'll speak for the other guys. I'll do the talking. Now, during the first three months, the take remained the same. All of a sudden, it dropped off $300 a day. How come? It's the churches. They got an organization here and told all the merchants in this district they didn't have to pay off. And a punk such the head of it who was aspiring for a political career. You know the punk? Do we know him? He's just like that, boss. The guy's going to marry his daughter. So that's how it is. Well, it's up to you to nix this guy. Daughter or no daughter. I had a couple of men tail you to the racetrack. They report you dropped on the average of three C's a day. Where the devil are you getting this money? I can tell you, boss. Shut up, you. Shut up. Start talking, Wall Street. Dollar Bill is married to a woman who's been staking him to her husband's insurance. And he's been dropping it at the races. That's right, boss. I didn't want to tell you because it's kind of a family affair. I'm through talking to you guys. I want action. Hello, Sue. Hello, boss. I tried to get you on the telephone several times, but you were still pouting. You ought to know that it's no use. I'll wait until you cool off and be right on your doorstep again. I don't blame you. It was partly my fault. It's nobody's fault, darling. It's just a matter of circumstances. Shall I drive you home? Home? That's the last place I want to go. Drive me all about. All about it is, my lady. Martini cocktails? Just like you like them, girl. Hungry? No, but I can't wait to eat. I've got to get home. Get home? That's all I ever hear. Aren't we going to be alone anymore? 
I love the dollars. I don't like this Teresa Crown assignment any more than you do. But Kai insists that I tag along. Oh, I'm not talking to you, Jean. You know, I'm crazy about the kid. And it burns me up when we separated so long. <laughs> well, at least I can part of my job. What are you doing to me, kid? I call you up to the school, I get to run around, try to contact you at home, no dice. Let's come over here. To tell you the truth, Dollar, it's the work I'm doing at the school that keeps me so tired of. Work? What's that? Well, I don't like the idea any more than you do. But what am I going to use for money? Money? <laughs> is that the only thing that's worrying you? What else is there for me to worry about? I've got good health, plenty of ambition, and I've got you to love me. Anything I've got, baby, is yours for the asking. And to tell the truth, you don't even have to ask for it. Will I hold you for a couple of days, sugar? You're the sweetest daddy. I'm the last person to interfere in family affairs. But what kind of friend would I be to stand by and see your house burning down without telling you about it? Oh, out with it, Maud. We've had secrets before. Well, I'll make it short. You know Chicken, my number man. Mm -hmm. Well, he told me, knowing that I'm a friend of yours, he don't see why you don't know that Dollar Bill gambles every penny he can get his hands on. Either with the horses or the dice. He's the chippy chasey's man that ever wore. He says that he, every penny that you have, he's going to find some way to dip you out of it. He says that... He's said enough to get himself thrown into Sing Sing for slander. My dear, don't you know these nickel and dime chisels are always jealous of the man who can go out and make a decent living? My dollar has brains. And I give him credit. And I happen to know that he's in the grocery business. Uh, uh, vegetables and stuff. All right, sister. I did my duty, and I hope I'm wrong for your sake. Oh, I appreciate your telling me what you hear, more. But don't let scandal worry you. I ain't gonna let it touch me. That must be wrong. It's me and him against the world. That's how it is, Mom. Economic life. Not politics Stick tonight, Bob. Such measures. All right, no and politics. I don't feel like swing music either. Okay, no swing then. I'm storing away some morning dew. And in a bundle, tied with ribbon gold of blue, you will find some moonlight in my hope chest of dreams for you. In the sky of you know, Bob, this drive out here tonight was just the medicine I needed. Have you a kid, doctor? Do you think a kiss is good for the patient? Sure. It makes the patient better instantaneously. How should he be taken? Three times a day. Every day? Every day. For how long? Till death do us part. Time for the girls to be getting home. If you drive slowly, you'll give Mama a chance to get there before we do. If we get there too soon, we'll just park outside until she comes. I'm so happy here with you, Bob. Just like this. I hate to go home. Good morning, honey. Mama, will you come in sit down? I'm coming, honey. Wonderful morning, isn't it, honey? I hope you like it. From the looks of it, I don't I'm going to like it. You know, I've got a funny taste. And lots of things other people are crazy about leaves me cold as ice. Mama, I still insist you're the sweetest woman in the world, and I'm lucky to have you for a mother. Words like those coming from Sue should be appreciated by anybody. Oh, my girl isn't very affectionate, but she is sincere. Like a mother. I may be sincere, but I'll never be able to cook like you, Mama. Now you let me do the cooking. I expect better things for my baby. Why do you think I'm keeping you in school? <laughs> Your mother has it all figured out for you to marry a judge or senator, no less. Personally, I wish you better luck. Marilyn, at this time, is far away from my thoughts. I think it's a bit more important for you to be What's troubling you, honey? Well, believe it or not, the time has come when I must again pay those lovely professors on the hill for the higher education they addition out of there. Or well, like Jill, if you have no jack, you come tumbling down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure you owe those guys in here. They are not guys that I want to speak to you. For heaven's sakes, you two. Sorry. 
I can't just only ask her how much she owed at the school. I heard you did. And I also heard her snippy answer. I said I was sorry. And now, Mama, don't allow the matter of $69.80 to disturb you. If you haven't got it, we haven't got it. And that's all. That's not all. You're my little girl now. And how do you think it would sound people going around talking about Donald's girl got kicked out of school on account of that small change? But I haven't got the money just this minute. Please don't worry, Mommy. Won't the little lady let me come to her rescue? I thank you no. Soon. Mother, I don't want his money, and please don't make me take it. The little girl is having a hard time running what belongs to you belongs to me, and vice versa. Soon will go mighty hard with me if you don't finish school like I dreamed you would. After all, Sue, this money is as much your mother's as it is mine. It's a little interest on an investment we made. And I don't want you ever to feel bad taking money from me. All right, Mr. Donald, Since Mama wishes that I'll take your money, you won't feel bad. There, now. You've been your own sweet self again. The Lord knows I'll be a happy soul when you two decide to bear the hatchet and be more loving. I do the best I can. I know you do, dear. But it's Sue. Excuse me. You're letting yourself in for a lot of grief, fella. You know these big time rackets pay a lot of money for protection. And they get it too. Don't tell me of the power of the rackets, Butch. I can refute all your arguments. Oh, I know the federal boys will get them in the end, but they can cross up a lot of people before they're caught. I'm walking into this with my eyes wide open. To me, it's just the gangster's last stand. When they stoop to chiseling, hard-working, poor-colored people, they're stepping on my toes. Oh, if only the organization would pull with me, everything would be all right. Oh, they're with you, all right. It's the first time in the history of all of them they've ever been with anybody so unanimous. All you've got to do is whistle, and they'll follow. Good. The first time we show a solid front demanding our just desserts, protesting against injustices, the first time we sacrifice personal things for the progress of the whole, then we will see a new day. Not only for us Negroes here in Harlem, but everywhere. <laughs> I must remind you to incorporate that new Madison Square Garden speech. And that was an inspiration, Father. Oh, I was just thinking. Now, Pat, all you have to do is to pass the word along with the banners are ready to be picked up at the Liberty Printing Shop. Know where that is? Yes, I know. We had club dance cards printed there. Let's see now. What else did Bob ask us to do? Oh, nothing. Just lobby around a bit and pick up the unanimous vote like all the other organizations. Oh, uh, I have to meet Bob right after Sunday school. Now, how soon do you think all the girls would be there? Well, I said 4 o'clock. That means 5. Not for everybody. To me, 4 o'clock means 4 o'clock. That speaks of boss of the new Negro. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. My experience with girls of any color is that it's always smart to be late. Oh, but I hope they don't keep Bob waiting because it makes him tragic. I'm dying of thirst, Sue. But we've got good to drink. Well, there's some orange juice and milk in the ice box. Mix yourself a highball. <laughs> Come along, Jackie. Let's raise the ice box. I'll get the drink for both of us, Jackie. Hello, Mr. Richards. Dollar Billy, you Alice. Don't be so far. Say, I took a swing of that basketball game you played with the New Jersey Devs. And believe me, your form was terrific. Oh, you like basketball? <laughs> what a form. You should be playing in the leagues with that form. You were dynamite. Glad you enjoyed the day. And to show you how much I enjoyed it, I'm going to throw a party for just us two. What do you say? I happen to have a boyfriend who wouldn't appreciate the idea of your throwing a party for just us two. Come on, don't be so old-fashioned. I'm not old-fashioned, Mr. Dollar Bill. There are ethics involved if you follow me. Follow you? That's the best thing I could do. You'll have to excuse me now. Jackie's waiting. I've got to be going. Well, it's the day and the time you feel like using it. Just wait until Bob sees you in this dress. His heart's going to do a home run right up to his Adam's apple. <laughs> Daddy, please taste this custard. I think it's the best I ever made. Listen, Minnie, you're a good cook and a kind-hearted woman, and I like you. And I got other things to think about besides tasting your cooking all day. Oh, don't be so grouchy, Daddy. I know you've got business worries, but Sunday's the only day we have together. Please taste the custard. All right, I'll taste it. Isn't it nice? Now leave me alone. Do I annoy you by just sitting here beside you? Minnie, I need money. You haven't got it to give me. I gotta think fast where I can get it from. 
useful, and I'd do everything I can to help you. Listen, Minnie, I'm in no mood for cheap talk. I got ideas where I can get the money from. But I'm married now. My hands are tied. Do you mean some other woman, Dollar? There you go. Ask him questions. Questions when I need real help, not lip service. Are you sorry that you married me, Dollar? When you mind your own business, I haven't got time to think. Dollar, be careful what you say so you won't be sorry. Shut up. Dollar! Quit mourning on me, will you? We are no radicals. We have no axe to grind politically. We're not picketing for any favors or privileges. We're not stump speeching against anything or anyone who lives within the law. But when a thing vitally concerns us, as does this bitter advantage being taken of Holland Pepper, when our shopkeepers are forced to pay racketeers for the privilege of operating legal businesses, when law-abiding citizens in our group are intimidated by hoodlums, then it is time for us to put forth a united effort to stab it out. Bob, the girls and myself want you to know that we're all in accord with your sentiments. It does my heart a lot of good, kids, to see your response already. But I must warn you, it's a nasty job you're stepping into. Not exactly in line with your pink tees and coming out parties. It's going to mean contact with people whom you've only read about. So if there's anyone afraid of realism, this is the time to back out. Oh, hello, Sue. Uh, did you see Reverend Hornsby? Yes. Passed him on the steps, said he was just leaving you. Well, how'd everything go? Oh, Mama, everything was simply marvelous. All the girls pledged to join Bob's campaign cleaning up the racketeers. We're going to interview every shopkeeper and peddler in this district and convince them to stop paying off these extortions. We're going to prove to them they've got to fight these burglars with their own weapons. And sooner the showdown comes the better. Oh, darling, you know what you sound like? One of those soapbox speakers. <laughs> and she was spilling my apple, too. But that stuff about fighting gangsters with her own weapons, that's to nuts, kid. I don't think they're going to like it. Well, whether they like it or not, that's just what they're going to get. And nothing they could get would be bad enough to suit me, the vultures. You said it. Imagine a guy going around holding up a poor, harmless, innocent vegetable man who's pushing the truck around to make a living. Imagine sticking up that kind of guy. Oh, okay, boy. Uh, what kind of signal are we going to get to start the way? For you, dollar. Sounds like the boss. That's the man. Uh, oh, it's you, boss. Well, we gotta show those guys we mean business. Look, Sap, you pick out the most prominent guy in that section. See? Make him an object lesson for the rest. Then politely go around to the others and collect the money. But we feel kind of personally, uh... Who's asking for your personal feelings? You wanna know something? Have a guy with me who figures you ain't so dumb after all. He figures you've just worked out a system to cover yourself. I hope he's wrong, for your sake. Yeah, but boss, look, uh, hey, boss. Well, what's the matter? That guy's after me. He's just itching for a chance to cut me down. After I sat out and map out a campaign for him to take in a hundred dollars a day haul, then nurse it along until it gets to five hundred dollars a day. Yes, I'm all over the place. Stand by and see him pull raids on my own people. Now he wants to murder. I tell you, he's after me. Well, what are you going to do? Man, why don't you tell them old fellas where to get off at? Yeah, and pick up your head in the Harlem River. Ah, oh, that's the trouble. You can't make good with those guys. But I'm going to make good. I'm going to make good for Dollar Bill. Harlem is my meat anyhow. I'm going to put the heat on those chisels. I'll show them who's running this territory. No, you're right. That's the way to talk, man. Well, what is that to do? You work all day and all night. When the end of the week comes, get up in the hole. You let these guys come in without fighting, take where you hire every money. I'm tired of working with us. I ain't gonna do it no more. 
listen to me all of y'all. It's all right for tomatoes to stand up there and shoot off his mouth, but what chance have we got with these guys? We can fight back. We are number them anyway. It ought to be some justice for Popo. What about the police? They're always too late to do your head any good. You is right. It ain't as if we only fight these small time burglars up here, but they got powerful white folks backing them up. I tell you, you ain't got a chance. Either pay up or get out of business. I just keep on paying and you'll starve to death. So you want to get somebody killed? Oh, oh, what are we going to do about it? Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Bob. Listen to me. Don't pay any more shakedown money to these rats. Take a good look at the man who demands it of you. Stand by your guns and show these people that they can take advantage of you. We'll do the rest. Listen, mister, whoever you is. I found out a long time ago that a half a loaf is better than none at all. I also found out that it's useless to argue with a guy who's got a gun in his stomach. And unless you and your organization can keep them guys from coming around to collect, I don't see how we can help ourselves. There's laws in this country after all. They can't kill everybody. That's right. Yes, brother, but I'm thinking of me. I ain't no martyr. Yes, you are. You are sacrificing yourself and all the others through your coffin. You're helping these criminals in their crime against society. There'll be someone of this organization in your place of business who will be able to testify against these people. These small lieutenants of ours will save you the risk. All you've got to do is cooperate with me. With a touch like that, and your figure, you should go places. I wish you'd go places and leave me alone. Oh, listen to the kid bawling me out. I like it when you smoke it like that. You sure got the fire that's burning me up. I wish you wouldn't touch me. I wish I wouldn't either. And when I see you sitting there looking so sweet, I just can't resist the temptation. Well, this is the end. If I can't be left alone here five minutes without having to fight you away from me, I'll have to leave here. Don't talk like that, honey. Can I help it if I fall for you? Well, it's no use. I detest you. It's okay. I've only stood all of this because I don't want to hurt my mother. Hang your mother. I'm tired of you sticking up criticism and alibi. I love you and you know it. I'll tell my mother what you No, you won't, because you love me too. I wouldn't have the inside road with you if it wasn't for her trying to save her feelings. Feelings? What do you know about that word? What I didn't know, you taught me since we've been living here together. Away from me. It's too late now, no. baby. This is the payoff. Well, now you know. You had to know sometime. Mother, I would have given anything to you. I should think you would. I ought to kill you. You must be more understand of children, Minnie. Little girls get strange notions sometimes. She'll get over it. Well, she'll get over it someplace else. I don't want her under my roof. You mean to say you're blaming me? Get out. I'm sorry to come between you and your daughter, Minnie. She's hot-headed, but she's your own flesh and blood. Don't you stand up for her. She isn't worth it. <laughs> I might have known I couldn't trust another woman around you, Dollar. Why, Sue, what on earth are you doing here this hour of the night? You look as if somebody's chased you, Sugar. Who is Bob? He can't be far if you're here. Hey. Don't tell me you're eloping. Now, that would be thrilling. Maybe they are eloping. Oh, no. My mother asked me to leave her home. Oh, well, Sue, don't feel that way about it. 
You know, really, I think it's best after all that you let that house before something more serious happen. It wasn't doing you any good having a guy like that for a stepfather. And anyhow, this is where you belong, right here with us. Mother! Yes, dear, I'll be there in a minute. Oh, but how can I tell her this? Oh, Sue, aren't you ashamed of yourself? You know, Mother feels as though you're our own sister. And there's plenty of room here. And I have an allowance that you can use until you get started. After all, what are friends for unless they can help? Hello, Sue. What's the matter, my child? Oh, that awful man, her mother made her mother ask her to leave. Put you out? Why, what was wrong? Yes, Sue, how did it start? <laughs> Never mind, dear. You come into the room and lie down. And after you've rested a while, we'll thrash this whole thing out. Whoopie girl. Of course we will. Meanwhile, I'll run you back. And I'll get her some hot milk. If it makes you feel any better to cry, cry, child. <laughs> you know, if Chuck doesn't hurry up and ask Mother about me, I don't know what I'm going to do. What do you mean? Oh, what do I mean? I've just gotten to the place where, I don't know, half of me says, now, Jackie, be a good little girl, and listen to your teachers, and think only of the things spiritual and aesthetic. And what does the other half of you say? I hate to see the evening sun go down. The man I love, the sweetest man in town. And she used to be such a nice girl. Oh, cut it. You're the nice girl. Nice as they come. Hey, how's about giving the boyfriend a raise? Yeah, why don't you? He might be worried. All right. I'll try now. Is that you, Paul? Yes, I'm a jacket. No questions now. I'll see you in about 15 minutes, huh? All right, dear. Well, go ahead, kids. I'll see you after your classes. Okay, kid. It's a yes to biology. Bob, I'm not going back to school. What? One term away from your diploma? Quit kidding. What's all the mystery? What's happened to you? Well, while I was struggling with that stepfather of mine again, Mother came in and blamed me for making advances to him. Laugh at him. Your mother turned against you for that man while I was... Oh, no, you didn't. It's just as it should be. Why, well, Sue, all those splendid records, those sleepless nights. I know all that. But I'm at the mercy of your friends. I've got to get a job. Which means we should get married right away. You could still continue school. No, when we get married, it's got to be for better, not for worse. Why should all these miserable things happen to us? Such me, Bob. But here we are, and the future looks awfully dark. What are you going to do? I don't know yet, but I'll think of something. Broadway? You'll be a sensation, honey. Broadway will see your name in lights. If you don't believe me, just come to rehearse at four o'clock. What did she say? I couldn't make her budge an inch. Funny she makes her living in show business and thinks it's too low for you. Perhaps she'll come around after a while. But I've done everything vague, pleaded, explained. Oh, what can I do? She's your mother. She'll come to her senses. She'll forgive you.
Just as they was going to put that squeeze play on me, the Mason gang rubbed him out. What do you think of that? Uh, that leaves you in control of the works, huh? And uh, that makes you the boss. Not so fast. Here comes the catch. You're right. The catch. Another guy. Maroon. You ever hear of him? Uh, Detroit Big Shot. That's right. He's from Detroit. He's inherited this territory. Oh, Holloman's getting to be a regular freebie, ain't it? It has been, but it won't be anymore. Before those guys can find a way around, Dollar Bill is going to be the biggest man in these parts. And muscling in is going to meet with severe punishment. I sure like the way you talk, Dollar. It makes us all feel more like men. It's bad enough when we have to push these guys around to get results. But when some bozo comes all the way from Detroit to crack the whip, it's not so good. It's Western Slate. <laughs> this is my territory, and I'm going to run it. I've started already. I sent a couple of the boys from Newark down to take care of that Jamaican fool who's been making stump speeches against me. I had to make an example out of somebody. <laughs> so I picked him out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me, home. Do you think a man that worked the way I do has got any right living in such a place? I work all day and night and do what to hand over the profit to guys like Hono. And there's no justice in this country. Listen, Jamaica, we didn't come for no summit. We want that dough and we want it now. Quit stalling and get the dough. But I don't got no dough. Oh, so you're going to make it hard on yourself. Ain't y'all tired of coming here stealing from poor people? Ain't y'all tired of persecuting my poor husband? Listen, you. Keep your flat nose out of this before I kick you. <laughs> That's an example of what you'll get the next time you try to get tough. Get out of town, you guys. You bowl everything up. Pick you up in Newark, softy. When we get in a spot, we get out of it. And we don't care how. And don't forget that dough. Those guys left Jamaica's wife in a bad shape. This is an awful mess. Gee. Uh, you said something? Shut up. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. And Marone don't like the way you operate. No, the boss don't like you. I never even seen the boss. Why shouldn't he like you? Your reputation for being a straight shooter ain't so hot. What do you mean? I'm an all right guy. Didn't the other big shot tell you about me? That's just the trouble. He did. We've been following you around long enough to know that you spend it faster than you get it. And somebody's got to be cheated. If that's the case, we ain't the one, see? Be reasonable, fellas. What have you got on me? Nothing. But the boss wants 15 grand he says is owed to him from this racket, and you're responsible. You tell your head man this is hard. And whatever Dollar Bill takes him from now on is his own business, see? That's what we call a double cross, fella. We ain't kidding. You either pay up or start praying. What's the matter, Daddy? Something wrong? Oh, just some friends of mine paid me a visit. We're no friends of here, and this ain't no visit. It's a stick-up. They want $15,000. What are you gonna do? Oh, I'll take care of it. You'll take care of nothing. <laughs> are you hurt? I'm sure I heard a shot down in the bathroom washing my hands. He was I scared. It shocked me to death. Sound like a gun battle. Oh, Johnny. A couple of burglars were in the house. We came home and surprised them. They started shooting and shot them. They didn't get you, honey. Please take care of yourself, will you? Did you call the police? No. Honey's won't do her no good. She's been shot. Well, don't you know you always call the police anyhow? Where is the patient? No, she wouldn't last through the ride. Call the police. Thank you, some of those. 
Good evening. Is Sue home yet? Better ask Mom. She's in the kitchen. Thanks. she's got now, and we have to put up a brave stunt for her. <laughs> that poor child. Oh, why does all these things have to happen to her? I thought she'd be here by now. I think I'll go call for her. I don't know why then you had to work so late. I was just coming for you. Are you all right, honey? Won't you have some coffee? You have the nail right on the head. Where are all the kids hiding? They're in the bedroom, and I bet they even brought their home. Won't you go see? Miss Sue, you really need a little rest. Rest? How can I rest when all of the cattle and the lark and my mother is dead? I was in the wrong. I shouldn't have left her just because she slapped me. I left her when she needed me most just because she slapped me. Yes! I killed her! <laughs> Boy, that was a killer. You know, oh, when I made that speech down there that night, you know, what? it was too. Look at all facts. Boy, when it comes to a craving, you sure dependable. Well, you know I got to praise the occasion with my careless. Of course, I don't play me cheap. I am understudied to be the mayor of honor. And when I was elected, I was going to remember my friends. <laughs> yeah, when you get elected, give me the key to the... Uh, the Harlem Banks, I know. Uh, scotch and soda, my dear man. <clears throat> I thought gin was your drink, Fats. Well, you have to buy it. I still say scotch and soda, my dear man. Careful, honey. Yes, Al, you want me? You know I want you. Come here a minute, will you sugar pie? Yes, Daddy, I'm coming. <laughs> Boy, I never knew a grand prize would be such a bitter pill to swallow. I mean, a sweet pill to swallow. Listen, huh? leave me out. I don't stand anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, I want you to meet the future Mrs. Dollar Bill Rich, who's going to make me a guess about me. Get up and look at Dollar Bill and tell that he's crazy about Clarabel. You don't have to brag about it. <laughs> That's a natural couple. What? I mean, the couple uh, looks natural. Uh, that's what they say about dead folks, fool. Uh, what that's mean is that uh, Clarabel is scrumptious and Dollar Bill is sick rambunctious. What? You better get out of here, Wall Street, before you get hurt. Oh, Wall Street. You're wasting your time, pal. Let's 
shot, monsieur. Who shot? Uh, Valabille, uh, five and wild street. Yes. Shot. Uh, the other gangster shot him. In the head. Shot him. Uh, wild street was trying to double cross them. Um, shut your mouth, boy. Can't you see they want to be alone? All right. But I'm so glad I don't got to pay them no, rounds no, no. Oh, I don't know what to do. Make me run home and tell me why. Good night, Mr. I just can't help laughing to myself when I think of all the strange people who go to make it up. Black man happy. What a place. You really love Harlem, don't you, Paul? Yes. There's so much to be done here. It's fairly screaming for leadership. <laughs> 